Hello, Bob. Oh, it has been so long now, so very, very long. No, I am not answering them. They're on the machine. Here, sit here. Try these canapes. They're Nigerian. Ali adores <laughs> them. Which is interesting because in convent school in Africa, I studied Aboriginal anatomy. And from cranial proportions, it's likely Ali's ancestors were Nigerian. Oh, I wish you two could meet. He's shy about my friends. It's residual tribalism. The ethnoanalytical literature mentions it. And of course, he's away right now. Oh, I am so glad you came by. No, 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 let them ring. I have to rest sometimes. It was sweet of you to ask me to audition for your play. Wouldn't acting on Broadway be an adventure? But we've started this business, and I'm left here to manage. Of all things, the one I never studied. But Ali has. He's made me feel foolish not to have examined capitalism from within. He's shown me we can use its own weight against it. Oh, I can read your mind. Just another of Simone's black boyfriends. But he's more, Bob. I've evolved in that respect. Of course, I have a tropism for black men. They like me, too. I'd argue that it's an effective evolutionary instinct. It's certainly as efficacious as daddy's UN teams teaching the Ghanaians to grow soybeans. You should be grateful for it. If I hadn't eloped from my convent with that black camel driver, Daddy never would have exiled me to that maximum security play school in Texas, and I couldn't have run away to New York and been in your plays. Or met American black men. Oh, you. You only remember the crazy ones that used to come by and try to chop our door down. You never stepped into those cubicles and saw those frightened boys out of their flashy clothes. I learn more in that massage parlor than in all my colleges. <laughs> more than working in your plays, even. Those black boys and I, we were mythological. Like something out of the Eleusinian mysteries. True, maybe at first I was just like Mama, playing with her beach boys in Mallorca. But then I became aware of where I was and what I was doing to them. What had been done to them that made them willing to eat out of my shoes and all that white goddess stuff. We've destroyed them, Bob. Beyond the physical exploitation of their labor, we have used them for our self-realization and denied them theirs. We've deprived them of the most elementary basis for self-respect and we wonder why they sublimate in crime. I tell you, I have virtually abandoned psychologies premised on the unconscious and subconscious, even behavioral and archetypal models. I've become convinced that the urge to be moral, to think well of oneself, is the strongest of all psychic drives. I must help these people attain that. I must. Look, look what Ali is capable of. No, he's American. He was born Stanford something, some white slave owner's name. Look, we've written emerging nations offering to help them acquire farm machinery and textbooks and medicine. Uh, well, that's them that keep phoning. You have no idea. I speak some of the languages. I'm able to be helpful to him. Well, look, look, it's very real. See, here are some of the letters. See, I sign them. I'm titular head, but Ali is the brains. All he needed was someone to reinforce his concept of his own credibility, to make him see that someone could unconditionally, unsuspiciously believe him. And I do, Bob. And it's paying off. Well, already we've received seed money from my UN connections. Well, that's why Ali can't be here. He's taken all our money down to Mexico to invest in more promising currencies. <laughs> I never would have thought of that. He's way ahead of me. It had to be him that went. Well, there are so many people phoning and writing about their orders. Not that I know what exactly to tell them, but I do speak the languages. Ali was right. It had to be me that stayed. I, I am so glad you came by. It's so lonely here with Ali gone and the phone's ringing and him gone. So long a time now. So very, very long. <laughs>